In April 2010, the Icelandic volcano with the unpronounceable name Eyjafjallajökull Jukarul suddenly moved into the world's focus. The ash cloud emitted by its massive eruption closed down almost the entire European airspace, affecting air traffic worldwide. A natural disaster for many people, but a spectacular natural phenomenon for every nature enthusiast. Immediately after the first reports appeared on the news, we tried to go to Iceland and film this incredible eruption. Unfortunately, within a matter of days, the area had to be closed down due to melting ice and massive explosions. We were too late on this one, but promised not to miss the next chance. Am 9. September 2014, also four years nach der ersten On September the 9th, 2014, four years later, the media was once again full of reports about a major volcanic eruption in Iceland. As always, at an early stage of such events, there was very little information and precious few facts to rely on. Was this our second chance? We immediately contacted the Department of Civil Protection and Emergency Management in Reykjavik and found out that it was the truth. A branch of the Bardabanga volcano in north-central Iceland had erupted. When we asked for permission to go close to the eruption site in order to film, the answer was not very promising. They explained two major causes of danger in the direct area of the eruption. One was the poisonous volcanic gases that were constantly emitting in very large volumes. Gases so strong that they could even be smelled in Sweden, several thousand kilometers away. The second was an expected new eruption under the ice of the Vatnajökull glacier, which would have caused severe flooding. So we understood that the Icelandic officials basically didn't really want anyone in there. But we also understood that it was possible to go there if we had an official permit from the Department of Civil Protection. And from past experience, we knew that we had to move quickly because no one knew how long it would take this time until the area was closed down for everyone. Luckily, one of our photographers was in Iceland at the time, so we called him. And being in Reykjavik, talking to the people in charge, he was able to get the required permits. One for me and one for Heiko Bayer, who was joining me on this expedition. We immediately booked our flights and two days later left for Iceland. Unfortunately, we weren't able to travel together and so I had to carry all of the equipment by myself. Looking at the piles of stuff that had to be taken, it seemed to be an impossible task. When we arrived at Kevlavik International Airport, the weather was as you would expect on an island in the North Atlantic. The wind was blowing a hundred kilometers an hour and leaving the warm shelter of the airport building was an experience way beyond my comfort zone. How would we see anything of that volcano that we came for in this weather? But there was hope. We still had to spend the night in Reykjavik in order to pick up our permits the next morning and we weren't in the area of the volcano yet. To reach our base camp in Mürldalua, we had to drive almost 600 kilometers, all the way up to northern Iceland. And the further north we got, the better the weather turned, a common phenomenon on this rugged North Atlantic island. We finally reached Mürldalua after passing through some of the most beautiful scenery we have ever seen. Summing up the situation, in order to get close to the volcano and film usable footage, we had to take three steps. Step one was no problem, as we already had the required permit. Step two 
the weather needed to be reasonably good. It doesn't really make sense to film in the pouring rain. And last but not least, there was the gas. The concentration of poisonous volcanic gases at the eruption site were constantly measured, and the people that did that had the right to close down the area at any time. If this happened, not even our permit could have helped us. And sure enough, on our first day, they closed down the area. This was particularly bad news because there are not very many days with reasonably good weather in northern Iceland. So we made the best of it and instead filmed Europe's biggest waterfall, the massive Detifoss. <laughs> The next morning, we had our chance. Willie, our host at Myrdal Dalua, gave us the thumbs up. The wind was good, almost no gas in the access area to the Badabanga, and so we packed our gear and set off on a three-hour car journey. When you are used to good tarmac roads, driving in Iceland provides a very different experience. Roads are mostly just dirt tracks, and over vast stretches require four-wheel drive. In this particular case, as a condition of the permit, we had to rent one of those huge super jeeps and a guide, a safety precaution in case of an emergency caused by a sudden change of the wind direction, a major earthquake or additional eruptions which could have occurred at any time. If any of these happened, we had to be able to get away quickly and independently of road structures. This right here is the only way in. And it is, of course, controlled by Icelandic officials. Passports, permits and mobile phone numbers are checked and off we go. From the distance, it kind of looked like a campfire. But this was the Badabanga eruption gap, one kilometre long spitting magma almost 100 meters into the air. And right behind it, the ice cap of the Vatnajökull glacier. So, how close could we actually get? The volcano had already fenced itself in a massive new lava field. No way could we have walked on that. It would have melted our shoes in an instant. Fortunately, the wind was on our back, blowing the gas away from us, so this was not a problem. When we finally reached our shooting position, the camera focus showed a distance of 800 meters. Every once in a while, we got hit by pumice stone, so I think that we were definitely as close as we could get. heat haze caused by the lava field was so intense that it was almost impossible to find the right camera focus. As a matter of fact, we were not even sure if we were producing sharp images until we checked on a bigger screen later in Myrdal Dalawa. We stayed at the eruption site until 9 in the evening and then had to leave this mind-blowing scenery. I don't think that any of us will ever forget about this once-in-a-lifetime experience. We witnessed the genesis of our planet and discovered the true size of man 
standing next to the untamed forces of nature.